Good morning friends. Welcome to Pannika Tutorials YouTube channel. In this video, I want to discuss another example on CLR1 parser. For discussing that one, I have taken one grammar and I want to construct the LR1 items. If there are no SR conflicts and RR conflicts, I can say that the given grammar can be parsed using CLR1 parser. Am I right or not? So lot of students what they will do is that sir already we have discussed so many examples on LR1 items. We have watched all your videos. So we know the procedure and then by thinking that one they will skip this video. If you are skipping this video then you will not able to learn one important point in constructing the LR1 items. So I request everyone to watch the complete video to learn the LR1 items in a better way. So if I want to construct the LR1 items from this grammar, first I need to identify what are the non-terminals and terminals. The non-terminals are only S and the terminals are small a and small c. Okay. Now I need to take the augmented production which is S dash determines dot s dollar why the look ahead is dollar because this production i will write it in the dollar only so as there is a dot and after that there is a non-terminal i need to compute the closer so a meaning is that i need to write the production of s by dot in front of every production in the right hand side and what will be the look ahead for this one as you have written this production because of this s leave that s compute the first of the remaining thing as the remaining part is only dollar first of dollar is dollar so the look ahead for this one is dollar and then look at again lot of students will do one mistake here they will think that it is completed and they will write it as i naught and they will go for the i1 and i2 like that but if you are doing that one it is a mistake check it after dot again there is a s then what they will say that sir again we have to write the s production only already we have written it is a redundant no it is not redundant why it so you need to check it because this is lr1 items if it is lr0 items i would have accepted your statement so after dot there is a non-terminal s again i need to write the production of s and i need to keep the dot s a dot s c dot c now why I have written this production because of this S or because of this S, am I right? Even if you look at there is a dot S here, dot S is there. So you need to leave this dot S and compute the first of the remaining thing. See this production can be written as S dash determines dot S A dollar dot S C dollar. So from this one I will get a look ahead as A. From this one the look ahead is C, am I right? So now if you see this, this one has the look ahead dollar, this one has a look ahead A and C, whether they are same, the productions are the same, but the look ahead is different, so we need to consider them. So if I consider them, instead of writing as a two separate, I can write it as dollar or A or C, meaning is that the look ahead is dollar A and C, is it clear? I hope it is clear for you now. Now let me make it as I not. Okay, are you able to understand it or not? Now, now you can ask me, sir, again, why you have not done? Because all the terminals I got in the look ahead, so I no need to go for the redundant. Again, I will get the same look aheads. Okay, so that's why I have stopped here. And then let me check on I not on yes i not on s will be s dash determines s dot dollar is it clear now if you check it again there is a dot s so we need to compute the <coughs> sorry for it s dot a or s dot c okay and the look ahead is dollar or a or c why because whenever we are computing the go to the look ahead will not change. So is it completed? Here S is there, here S is there, here S is there. We have written those all those productions and the corresponding look aheads. So I can say that this is my I1. Now look at on C. 
on C it is S determines C dot dollar or A or C. Okay, let me write this as an item and make it as I2. Is it clear? So from I0 on S on C, I have computed the go to and I got I1 and I2 items. Now this is a reduced move. Lot of students will think that this is an SR conflict because this is a reduced move and this is a shift is there. Am I right or wrong? Now if you look at it, the shift is happening on A and C. But the reduced move, we have to write it in the dollar. So both are all three are different. So this is a shift. I will agree. This is a reduced move. I will agree. But this is not an SR conflict because the shift is happening on A and C. And this reduced move is we have to write it in the look ahead dollar. And lot of students will do another mistake also. If there is a yes dot B is there and let's take that some this A determines S dot B is there whatever the look ahead it is and there is a B dot B okay and you have A or B or C something is there they will think that sir this is a shift and this is a reduced move and I need to write it in all the terminals let's take that but check it this I will understand that and I will accept that this is a reduced move but is a shift move no this is a go to move why from this one if you compute on B, it is a non-terminal because if you consider this is a non-terminal because it is there here, it is a non-terminal. So non-terminals where we will write in the go to part, not in the action part. So this is not a shift move. Is it clear? When it will be a shift move after yes, after dot, there is a terminal, then only you should consider it as a shift move. Is it clear? So here it is a A and C are the terminal. So that's why I consider this as a shift move. However, there is no SR conflict. So I request you to note down these points. Okay. Now I1, this one is completed on A and C. I need to compute. On A, it will be S yes, determines SCA yes, dot. Can you tell me what is the look ahead? Dollar A and C. Is it clear? On small c, it will be S yes, determines. S C dot dollar or A or C. Okay. Now if you look at it, this is a reduced move. What is the number should I give? Let me give it as I3 and I4. Okay. Let me check whether it is finished or not. I0 we have computed from I0 the go to on S I got the I1 on C, I got the I2. I2 is a reduced move. I no need to compute the go to from this item. Now come to this one. This is a reduced move. So I no need to compute for this one. But on A and on C, I need to compute the go to. And I have computed, I got the I3 and I4. This is a reduced move. This is a reduced move. So I can stop here and I can say that this LR1 items construction is completed for the given grammar. Now you need to check anywhere. SR conflict and RR conflicts are there or not. Here, there is no reduced move. So there is no possibility of SR conflict and RR conflict. Here, reduced move is there, but only one reduce. After that, there is no another reduced move and another shift move. So only reduced move is there. So I can say that it does not consist of SR conflicts and RR conflicts. Here also, there is a shift move and there is a reduced move is there but it does not have any SR conflicts and the same rule applies for this one. So I can say that the given grammar is CLR1 means the given grammar can be parsed using CLR1 parser. Now can you tell me whether it can be parsed using LALR1 parser or not? Now to do that one you need to check whether any two items the productions are same but the look ahead is different. This one and this one is completely different. This one is this one is completely different. So if you look at it, all the items are completely different to each other. So we cannot combine anything. If we cannot combine anything, the number of entries in the CLR1 is equal to LLR1. As there are no SR conflicts and RR conflicts in CLR1, obviously I can say that 
there will be no SR conflicts and RR conflicts. If we combine them, any two state, then only there is a possibility. As we are not combining anything, so the given grammar is can be parsed using CLR1 and also LLR1. I hope you have understood how to construct the LR1 items in a better way from this example. If you still have any doubts related to this concept or related to this example, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.